if some, so somebody makes an appointment with you mm -hmm. for an inspection, how long does it take from the point of order to the point of the inspection? How quickly can you normally get to the point where you do the inspection? Well, since we have nine inspectors, uh, we can usually get to you within a day or two. Um, <clears throat> that day. And sometimes, you know, if you call early enough in the morning, we can get to it the same day. And how long does it take to get the inspection? And then is, is that sent to the buyer or is that sent to the agent or is that their choice? Or um, It's always the buyer's choice because they're the one that's hiring us. Um, we do have, have an agreement that the buyer has to sign that gives us permission to release it to their agent. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. And then if the buyer wants to attend the inspection, how do you deal with that? That's perfectly fine. Um, right now with COVID and, and different things, uh, if the homeowner is gonna be there, then we request they come toward the end of the inspection, say the last 30 minutes. Uh -huh. um, it so just what do you depends. do, do you call the buyer? How, how do you do that? Uh, we usually talk to the buyer, um, you know, once we get everything scheduled through the, the agent or through showing time, um, we let them know, hey, the home is occupied and, and the seller requests um, that we wear masks, you know, shoes covered, you know, and uh, if you can come toward the end of the inspection in the last 30 minutes to go Absolutely. over the report. Absolutely. I've got two pet peeves with inspectors. Oh. I've got my they? opinions and I'm, I'm going to touch base with you on that. The first sure. thing is some inspectors do not go on the roof, which I just can't understand because as we all know, every property in Texas is purchased as is. So some agents have got this idea that because it's as is means that we're not going to going to negotiate. Well, to be perfectly honest, if, if I'm representing a buyer, I'm going to go in and negotiate on the four points of a contract, which is at the start of the contract, Right, the offer part during the inspection, during the appraisal, and even if it comes to it at the table, you know, them are the points you can negotiate as an agent. Some agents don't even realize that's the case because it's as is. So I can't understand why some people even waive the inspection, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Sure. But I want as much information as I can as a buyer's agent, and yet you pay for an inspection and I expect it to be a, a full inspection and they don't go on the roof. Does your company go on the roof? I'll let Chris answer that since right. he's the inspector. So most of the time we do get on the roof if it's accessible. Uh, most of our guys carry like a 21 foot ladder, which 99% of the houses you can get on with that. Um, every now and then it's a three story house. We can't get on. We do. Uh, if you want those, uh, inspected we can uh, fly drones on those not all the inspectors have drone license but we do have several that do so we can get to them so how can you evaluate a roof with a drone uh, drone actually works very well you can uh, you can get up there and see basically anything that you can see while you're on the roof the only disadvantage of uh, drone inspection is probably if they're soft spots and you're not on the roof you can't feel that uh, a lot of the roofs nowadays are so steep that you're not going to be able to see that anyway because you can't get on those sleep, okay. steep slopes. But uh, we can see all the ridges, which are where most of the problems occur, and any missing shingles, nails that are exposed, things like that. Can, can you evaluate with a drone, can you evaluate how much life is left on the roof? Yes, you can, because you can actually, once you take a drone picture, you can zoom in on that roof and you can see the granular and everything. I mean, it's like you're on the roof. So you could estimate roughly oh, yeah. how long is left on that. Oh, yeah. I, I can usually estimate a roof when I'm on it for within two or three years, and I'm, the drone's about the same. I mean, I can understand why it's a drone if it's a three-story unit, but some guys, some guys, even if it's a one-story home, they, they will on. not get on the roof. Right. Uh, but it's so frustrating as an agent because I want as much as I can to give value to my client, you know, and your client is the buyer as well and yet they, they, they won't go on the roof. Yeah. And it's frustrating. So if they go on the roof, do you think that's the best way to inspect the roof? Or do you think the drone is the new way to inspect the roof? I, think I can understand why you don't want the roof if it's three stories tall. Yeah. There, there are certain cases when you get on a roof and if it's real steep and the granular's loose, it, you really, it's not safe to walk it. Or if it's raining and it's, uh, it's got a lot of moss on it, you will slide wow. down that roof. So that, in that case, the drone is a very good uh, Okay, option. well, I've got to tell you a funny story. 
There was a client, actually one of my, it wasn't my client, it was one of the agents in the office, didn't use an inspector, decided to get their brother to inspect a property who's a contractor, walks on a roof and puts their foot through the roof. <laughs> so happen. I think that's a mistake sometimes that people make is they use a contractor who's not an inspector and then, you know, things like that, and it can get a little bit embarrassing. And then, of course, the seller's upset and you're trying to negotiate with somebody. So, yeah, but as I said, that's one of my pet peeves. So basically, you're saying that nothing replaces to actually get on the roof and walk on the roof, but you just got to be yeah, careful. That, that is the best way. I have been on roofs and then uh, go in the attic later and then find out that there's a big hole that was cut out and they've just put a little piece of sheet metal over to put the shingles <laughs> on. That's kind of scary because, like... You might not see that if you're on the roof. And rough, roughly, how long does it take to do an, you know, to do an inspection? Uh, we usually look at about an hour per thousand square foot, usually about a two-hour minimum, even if it's a smaller place, uh, unless it's a little condo that you're not really inspecting much outside, just the, the outs, outside area. And how about, and, and how about uh, what type of inspections do you do? Uh, we do residential and some commercial. We, we're not doing the big uh, commercial buildings or anything like that, but a lot of, uh, a lot of our clients do. They buy investment properties, uh, townhouses, uh, old apartment type uh, buildings and stuff like that. And we do a lot of that. Okay. And what, what was very interesting when I spoke to Ricky yesterday, uh, just to discuss some of the issues we we're going to talk about today, you were saying you actually have a sewer camera, so you can... Yes. We do. We have uh, four sewer cameras, actually. So okay. we can actually go into the sewer lines, inspect those, um, and we we find very, very high percentage of the ones we do have some type of problem on it. What, May broken I, pipes are we talking um, about? Or what's, what's common problems for so, the sewer? Either pipes that are uh, separating a little bit, uh, come, you know, not straight together. They actually uh, pull apart a little bit. Uh, roots coming into the system. Bellies, which is basically where it holds water so it's not flowing properly. Mm -hmm. Those places cause clogs and stuff like that. Um, if they're kind of, it's kind of like I had at my house when I bought my house um, 30 years ago. I... Uh, was in the house. I didn't know much about home inspections at the time. I did have a home inspection, but they didn't see it, of course, because they didn't go down the sewers. Um, but I had a, a pipe separate a little bit, and I noticed a little sinkhole in the backyard, and I did not knowing it. I just started throwing all my stuff from doing the yard in that little hole, and eventually it decided to stop. I had to dig down eight feet <laughs> to get to it. So. It's very important, and uh, when you do a sewer cam inspection, we also give you a year warranty on that versus a three-month. Interesting. And then also, you offer mold inspections. Yes. Yes. Chris has been licensed uh, at licensed mold tech um, oh. in 2014, and then now um, in 2016, he became a mold assessment consultant. Okay. And with the lab tests that you do on that, how long does it take for you to kick their mold test back? Um, if it's done Monday through Thursday, we get next day. Um, as That's long really as, quick. We used long, to, we yeah. had a mold inspection about three months ago that we did for a property, and it took 10 days for the labs to get back, wow. which was oh. just far too much, you know, because we, you know, if you have more than 100 square feet of linear square footage, in the state of Texas, then you've got to get remediate. You know, it's got to be remediated by a professional company and follow guidelines by the state of Texas. And it really was a headache. So in that meantime, because we found out that there was a mold problem, they suspected a mold problem. We had to move out everybody to a hotel and house them. And it got you know very expensive. And the quicker you can do this, and obviously the less stress you have for the people in the unit, and the quicker we can go on and get this done. Right. You know, it's, it's a pretty complicated process to follow. 